or it's just going to be something entirely new. But sometimes it's so easy to cram our heads full of what we think we know that it doesn't really make room for that unlearning and the things that we really need. And coming into a P role, this is one of the spaces which is really for you. You're going to be spending most of your term taking care of others, whether it's your team, it's your LC, it's even people around your entity network or it's around the region. So the other thing I'd like to invite you to do is allow yourself to invest in yourself. It's gonna be so easy just to get caught up in everything you need to do for others that even in order to complete that role, how are you going to be the best version of yourself and how are you going to use APLS and also this upcoming session to do that. So to start with, I want to invite you to join a bit of a personal podcast. I know it's not just in ISEC, but for many of you who might be studying right now or even just ways to sort of catch up with people and still stay safe in the world, there's a lot of screen time going on. The next few slides, there's going to be some content. So I do invite you to um, have a look if that's what you'd like. But also for those who just might be feeling a bit tired, just a little bit over looking at the screen so much, this is definitely a session where you can feel free to look away from the screen, just shut your eyes. As long as you can hear everything, as long as you're in a comfortable space, we're gonna give some time just to listen and also to reflect. When I think about passions, it's easy to get caught up in everything that has been said and done inside of ISEC. You've all been around probably for just long enough to be in this amazing environment we all have to talk about our passions, to explore them, to think about what they are. But when I think of exploring passions and really knowing yourself, the first thing that comes to mind is how we're told what to care about before we even get a chance to figure it out. My story is one that's shared by a whole lot of people in Australia and especially Isaac in Australia. I was the only child who grew up in Australia that was also born here from a Chinese migrant family. And there are a lot of stereotypes floating around there these days, especially with, you know, accounts and pages, like subtle Asian traits, and just a whole bunch of things which can really connect to people when we talk about that Asian family experience, or in this case, that Asian migrant experience too. And what I'm talking about here is not just the stereotypical things of parents telling their kids to be doctors or lawyers when they grow up, or being told to kind of, you know, do your homework or respect your parents, even though I did experience a lot of these things. But when I think about what I was told to care about, it includes all the stuff that went unsaid. It includes the fact that if I just really look at how I spent a lot of my childhood at things like the extra tuition classes or the music lessons that my parents signed up for, the fact that our family had a lot of financial instability while I was growing up, but the thing that I was kind of nudged towards focusing on were all of these activities to try and make sure that myself as well as my older sister were going to be in the best place possible. And again, none of these things were really talked about, but it's just about where we were, the kind of things that we were praised about, if we did well in school, if we managed to have some kind of accomplishment that really made our circle of family friends very impressed. Relatives back in China feel very proud. And before I knew it, and definitely before I was thinking about it, this had shaped an entire way that I looked at the world, an entire way of being. One that really cared about how other people, especially people in my community saw me. One that looked at external standards. through the people we know, there seems to be another issue that pops up in the world every other moment, 
which really deserves our attention. And we might also know that these things are really important. People talk about the right to education. People talk about social injustice, economic inequality. And it's all well and good to know that all these things matter. But what I really want to give you some space to do now is think about what you actually care about. Beyond the things that you might know about, what are those things that you care about? So here, if you've decided to close your eyes and look away, you can continue just to think and reflect for yourself. If you're following along on the slides, you have something in front of you you want to write with, you can feel free to journal at this moment. But let's not dive straight into that tired conversation of what are my passions? What are my values? But let's take it a bit of a step back and think about some of these things. When did I last? When did I last do something with so much focus that I lost track of time? Awesome if it happened in the past week, the past month. If it's literally been years before something you've done that's given you so much focus and so much joy that you've lost track of time, that's also okay. But when was it? What was happening? If you've got a moment or two captured in your mind, just hold it there. When did I last feel my chest tighten, my fingers tingle or my face flush because of something that I saw, heard or felt? So again, let's not push ourselves into thinking about what these things mean. But right now is the space of just asking when, why, what? Where? How did all these things come together and why did I actually feel that way? Now I want to invite some of the thoughts that you've been having and take them into our first group block. So in Zoom, we're going to break up into different groups and just take 10 minutes to chat with your group. I want to encourage everyone to feel comfortable and not feel pressured to necessarily share everything that you've just thought about. But remembering that this is a group of people who around the region are going to have things in common about the experience with you. So you get to choose how much you want to share and whether you share anything at all, but every choice you make is something that can really give you and the people around you something to think about. So I will go to this slide with the questions again. You can feel free to take a picture, a screenshot. I heard that there's a delegate group. Might be useful if someone wanted to just throw it in there. And let's break off into rooms to chat for 10 minutes with the people in those groups. Open the breakout rooms now. Yep. And let's be in them for 10 minutes. Thank you. 
in like 30 seconds time. Okay, everyone's starting to come back. Yeah, everyone's here. Everyone's here? Amazing. All right, so very keen to know what was discussed and also to give people who would like a space to share. So feel free to raise your hand, I guess. However Zoom works these days, I'm not really sure. But if you would like, yeah, just kind of make it known and we can give you the rights to speak. I think Ayush from India raised his hand. Okay, awesome. Ayush, you can, you can unmute and share, feel free. Yeah, so uh, hello people. So yeah, I had this space and it was really good. Like we all shared the same moment, the time when we were planning in our manifestos, how we, the LC will look like, how we are envisioning the entire LC for the coming year. So we all had the same answer, the question. Uh, so it was really good to understand that I'm not all alone in this. Everyone is going through the same process that I went through. Everyone is having the same doubts that they have like that I have the things that I'm afraid of. How will I do this or how will I do that? All of us share the same thing. And one of our members like in the breakout room, his LCP application just get launched like two days ago. So all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Space is open for anyone else. FTN from Australia. Let's uh, go, Tien. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Tien from Australia. Um, I think for us, it was really interesting because we were like sitting around talking. Like, I think for us, since like ever since the pandemic and stuff like that, and we were talking about like what have we really been doing and stuff that has made us rethink. And I think for a lot of us, we didn't really have an answer. It was kind of like sad, like, like oh, I really have lost, I can't remember the last time we did have that feeling. I feel kind of sad actually. Um, and I think we were like, um, we asked we like, ask questions like why this is the case and stuff like that. And we're like asking like, oh, we spent quite a lot of time on Isaac and in the pro um, since COVID's happened, we haven't been able to explore a lot of things. Um, so that happened. And I think we were like talking about what do we want to try next year to at least get that sensation back. But yeah. <laughs> thanks, Tian. And thanks for your honesty as well, because if something doesn't immediately come up, then it just doesn't. And if that's the fact, then we have to roll with it and definitely make the best out of it moving forward. Anyone would like to go next? Solomon, raising his hand. Solomon. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, uh, hello, Jesse. Um, I'm Solomon from Australia. Um, I think it was interesting to see the team. Um, <laughs> I think it was interesting to see the team, uh, a lot of their, um, like a lot of the things that, they did like what was the first question it was about like oh the moment they just like stuck something and just finished it up was a lot of them was up um, lcp application so it's very interesting to see that and um i, I like i think i appreciate it for the team um like i think also a yes uh was uh, i see like it was quite vulnerable opened up about like maybe something uh, an experience that didn't that seemed a bit traumatic for like something that brought him tingling um as well as like um uh, Yuya, who mentioned about like George Floyd, the story about that and how um, he was like, it's something that he's passionate about and that how that really brought him, uh, really brought the feeling of like tingliness and that discomfort to him. And I, I think I really appreciate how the team really opened up in that space. Um, I think for me, similar to Tien, it was like something like I found hard to say on the spot. I couldn't think of something that came up. So uh, for that sort of feeling, uh, but yeah. Yeah, no worries. And thanks for sharing, Solomon. Really great to hear the conversations that went on there. We can have a couple more people. 
Yeah, Kumar from Pakistan. Hey everyone, so my name is Umar, uh, I'm from Pakistan. So uh, in our group, uh, generally people were a bit unsure about when that exact moment was when they felt their chest tighten or they were really excited because I think with the pandemic, it's bummed a lot of people, it's demotivated a lot of people. So people generally aren't sure of when that moment had really hit. Uh, but when I was sharing my moment, I think there were two moments when this had happened. One, when I was going on my exchange to Egypt I feel like that was a time when I was really excited and, you know, the prospect of living in a different country for six weeks did, uh, you know, tighten my chest. It had me excited. It had me all, all giddy and, you know, happy. And I think that was a feeling when I was really engrossed in everything that I was doing, highly motivated. And I think when I was applying to become the LCP uh, for my entity, I think that was another moment when, you know, I felt flushed. I had a mixed I had mixed emotions and I was really excited and really engrossed, you know, because when you're applying for such a high position, you think about the experiences that you've had up till now and you think about the vision that you want to enact in your entity. And I think that drives you, that motivates you to do more. So I think these were two instances when I'd felt really excited and uh, really uh, giddy in general. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Uma. For this last sharing for now, maybe if there's any ladies in the room who'd like to share. Isabella from MOC, you can go. Nice. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Isabel from MOC. Uh, so about the things that have really excited me like uh, lately, because um, I kind of devote all my time to I like into LCP role, and so uh, the things that can really raise my passion is the moment like a um, couple weeks ago when we were having the regional conference, and uh, the other facilities were like coming to tell me how. Uh, like tell me you really your entity really got some really uh, amazing members and we are having like some nice very nice uh, results from our new project so um i think the uh, what really excites me maybe for now maybe not some specific things but some uh, kinds of situations where i can guess actually get some results some outcomes i can actually see it feel it and and present it that's the things that can really motivate me and make me really really passionate about lately yeah thank you thanks isabella that's awesome Great. So thank you everyone for sharing. And we definitely had a bit of a mixed bag there. So with that in mind, I did want to bring this to the forefront again. Those things that you explored or perhaps the lack of the things that were explored, getting to ask ourselves, do I actually care about it or just think I care about it? And in a lot of ways, COVID has meant that some things that we could explore in the past, whether it was you know, the fact that all of you might physically be at a location together having this conference, the fact that ISEC would be able to do exchange and practice cultivating that cross-cultural leadership, which it's always stood for. But even outside of ISEC and a lot of the ways that this has impacted on all of our lives, there's a lot of limitations there. But the kind of same limitations that it's posed, the spaces it's created for us to just really sit back and reflect and take stock of what do I actually care about? How will you use that rare opportunity to see it as an opportunity in spite of all of the really shitty things going on in the world right now and everything that the pandemic has brought in those small spaces of time that it actually gives you rather than takes it away? How can we practice this? This idea that I give myself the permission to care about more, less. Sorry, more about less, that's the one there. Because it's so easy to get caught up in all of those things that maybe we experienced in the past. Or sometimes that less is just too little. We had some people sharing before that it was really hard to think of that last time that, you know, I really managed to do something and I really lost track of time because I just love doing it so much. Or I felt my fingers tingling because of how excited I felt about something. Or even the inverse, that that tingling wasn't a great thing because something really made me so angry or upset or anxious that even if those moments are really fleeting, how can you expand your care for them? The fact that they're standing out to you 
amongst all of the things that are going on right now. And for those of you, because I definitely struggled with this idea of responsibility, that idea of all those things that I was brought up to care about, and then all the things that were advertised to me around the world that I felt like I should be caring about, that to care about less, even if it was more, it almost seemed, it didn't seem okay. I didn't feel like I could give myself that kind of permission. But when you start to think that less things, but more, more things less, what kind of emerges for you there? And I've never liked staying in these theoretical realms because all this stuff, it can get real fluffy real quick and you can't do much with just these fleeting feelings. So what does it sound like when it's actually verbalized? I had the opportunity to move back home to Australia not too long ago. So I was working over in mainland of China earlier this year spent half a year there and COVID definitely switched up my life and had me moving back. And when I was cleaning out my drawers and actually stumbling across a lot of old Isaac sugar cubes that I just completely forgotten about, I found one of them, which was written to me from a member of mine back when I was an LCVP. And inside what she wrote me, there was this phrase which struck me more so now, years and years later, than it even did at that point. That she told me, you've always encouraged me to be myself. Not once have I felt weird or different around you. Honestly, I feel like I don't have to be ashamed of who I am anymore. You make me feel like I should be proud of who I am. And when I read that, I was like, damn. Because to be honest, Sometimes just chasing these thoughts around in my own head, sometimes asking yourself, what do I care about? What am I passionate about? Where do I want to take my life? And in all kinds of contexts, whether it's inside of ISEC, whether it's in your career or whether it's in your personal life, sometimes there isn't anything quite like being able to have those things spoken back to you. That when I look at this, and this is something that I have kept for myself to remind me, that all those years ago, this is someone I worked with in ISEC who was able to feel this from me. And this really encapsulates something that I'm very passionate about, that a lot of the things I do, whether it is educating myself, whether it is speaking out when I think the things are not okay that are going on, it really comes back down to this, that I want everyone to be able to feel everywhere that they are accepted, included, celebrated. And that's something which is my less that I care about more. Because as I said before, I know things like education are important. I know that the environment is incredibly important and everything we should be doing for climate change. So I know those things and I try to work towards those things. But what we can do for ourselves to really start to carve out the direction that we can begin to move and what really makes us forget about the time because we love what we're doing. What really makes our chest kind of tighten or our faces flush or whatever it might be comes down to sometimes these really concrete things that we can start to just put into everything that we do. So my next question for all of you is, what do you want people to see in and feel from you? That if someone asked, hey, what, what's it like being friends with, working with, having a class with so-and-so? And this is the kind of thing that they would say. Not because it's that recognition that we need, but it's because it's the part of ourselves, the passion that we're actually showing other people. What will other people see and feel?
with these things that people see and feel? How does it come from those things that made you feel something, even when you're not consciously thinking about it? So these are pretty big questions. And I said at the beginning that there's no pressure to kind of put on yourself to have the answers or come up with something perfect. But I do think that it is a good time just to give a bit of a break. Just another minute left.
from the people here, can I just get a quick show of thumbs up if you are back and ready to go? Cool, seeing some thumbs. Excellent. Okay, I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds for anyone else to get back in. So for everyone who is back, I'm just going to flick it very quickly to this slide once more and just encourage you all to have something in mind moving forward from this session. Not the answer, not the whatever I'm thinking of right now, I got to lock this in. This has to be my passion no matter what moving forward. None of that, but just something that you feel like does make sense to you and does make you go like, yeah, like this is, this is the kind of person that I want to be known for, to have something in mind for it. So moving forward, I'm actually curious about this because I know that some people join ISEC as having had an older sibling or maybe a cousin or maybe even a friend being part of it before. But did anyone here in this room actually know about ISEC five years ago? Like if, if you could just like raise a thumb, put a hand up, whatever it might be. Or write in the chat, yeah, no, 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 no. No, with a sad face. Yeah, so I think I'm definitely showing my age when now that I'm the one who wrote the question and when I read it, I can actually say that five years ago, I did know about ISEC because I was already in it. But if I was in your position, then the answer would definitely be no as well. Oh, okay. Someone had a cousin that told them they could go abroad. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah, so most of us just had no clue. And yet here we are. And with all the sharings that were going on before with people who, you know, have invested their time and energy into this organization, writing that LCP manifesto, getting to where you are at the moment. How many of you would have known that you would have been elected as LCP? And just by guessing from all the people who said no, it is definite that none of us would have thought that we would have been in this position. There's this really annoying question that adults like to ask kids, the whole idea of what do you wanna be when you grow up? Or even when you meet people now and you know, you've chosen your path, you might be studying something specific at uni and and yeah and some of you were going to yeet after your membership term that's that's totally a thing i was six months into isec and i was like okay this is the point do i quit or do i continue for another six and a half years where did i end up but yeah let's look at this fact that people always ask us or maybe we expect ourselves to know where we're going to be in our lives but we had no idea what isec even was and we had no idea what being an LCP even meant. But when we're all here at the moment, there's this really great quote that I take as a professional who's now left ISEC for a while, as someone who is still figuring out their life and where they want to take it. The idea that you don't have to see the whole staircase in order to take the first step. When we know what we care about and we start to try to plan something out with it, Depending on the type of person you are, if you are more YOLO, more spontaneous, and you don't mind going in the flow, that could be okay because you just really take wherever things go for you. But whether you are someone who does get, you know, quite anxious, wants to see five, 10, 100 steps ahead, or even if you are neither of these polar opposites, but as an LCP, maybe you're going to work with a VP who's going to be like that. Maybe people in your LC are going to represent all parts of the spectrum. But no matter who we are and what our tendency is, we really don't have to know everything in order to start moving in that direction. And whatever you want people to see in you, it doesn't matter what that end goal looks like, but how are you gonna start moving in that area? And right now, the job that I currently have, I talk to people who submit a form on a website 
for the company I work for. They put in a query, they're business owners, they want to know what we can do to help them. Uh, they appear in a list to me in a CRM and I call them back. And I share that thing before, right? About that member who told me that, yeah, like you really feel like I don't have to be ashamed of who I am, that you give me that feeling of inclusion. And now that I'm sitting in front of my computer all day, dialing people on the phone, what are some ways that I can take a stair in that direction, even if I don't know where that staircase is going to take me? I don't know if any of you have ever come across this before. I think it's actually one of my most frequented YouTube channels because the beauty of living in Australia is that you do get people from many different kinds of backgrounds and you tend to come across a lot of names which aren't Anglo or aren't from a culture that you're familiar with, definitely ones that I don't always know. And sometimes I see those names and I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's just so many instances in my life where I've been around in those scenarios where you're with someone, their name isn't an English name and someone just completely butchers it. Maybe the people in the room who've grown up in like Western countries would be able to relate to me, but you might be sitting in class and then the teacher's calling the role. You know, someone's got a name which the teacher has no idea how to pronounce. And then all of a sudden they have some like random nickname for the rest of their schooling life just because the teacher didn't know how to say it. And it seems like something so small and me calling up someone and feeling quite nervous and wanting to get their name right feels maybe insignificant in the scheme of things. But who knows that person that I'm calling, what, what experiences that they've had. The fact that they're in Australia, they're owning a business, probably meeting people all day, every day who just don't know how to say their names. What's it going to cost me to take 10 extra seconds to Google how to pronounce da da da, jump onto a video, which in itself you see is only under a minute as well, listen to the pronunciation and try my best just to get their name right. And what could that mean if it's done at scale? That if I can take that one step and start to translate that into things that can make people feel, oh, people actually give a damn about how my name is pronounced. What else can they actually care about me? How else can I feel something that makes me feel like, yeah, I'm going to be accepted in this place. I'm going to be seen as equal. People are going to take me seriously. That's what I do in my current job. And for all of you, whatever that thing is that it is that you care about, again, regardless of if it's an ultimate passion or not, where do my passions work best in my LCP role? I hate fluffiness, right? It's just not my thing. So I've decided to give you a few scenarios that most of you are probably going to come up against. Planning and leading your first EBM. I don't know how many of you have started to select your VPs. It's always a very exciting and sometimes scary thing to do. And that first touch point can feel like it means a lot of things. So in that space, how are they going to get to see you? Not just, um, you know, what people might see in passing or they'd be like, oh, you know, so-and-so is the LCP elect, like I know this from their election or blah, blah, blah. But how are they really going to start to see you? How are you going to represent ISEC to your university? Whether it's those, you know, really suspicious faculty members who are like, yo, I have no idea what you're doing here, but it seems kind of sus. Right down to the ones who are like, oh yeah, like this leadership thing seems pretty cool. And when you're representing ISEC to them, how are you going to show who you are as well? Talking to a confused new member at conference because we've all been there and we all are gonna have those conversations. Participating in national legislation meetings because LCP is not just about your LC, it's about your entity, it's about the region. Yeah, it does seem, I, I know, I've had a lot of the, it seems kind of sus scenarios in my life. So I know that people definitely feel that. And also maintaining relationships with entity partners. So, it says 15 here, but because I want to make sure that we do have enough time for everything, let's just put the rooms at 10 minutes again. Have some time to talk about these scenarios. Feel free to share those things that you care about, how you want to, you know, showcase who you are through those situations. And feel free to help each other to figure out what you can do too. So here are the scenarios again. Whoever can take them down chuck them into a place where everyone can see. No, I went past it again. Did anyone get that? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have to go through all the animations. Oh, 
one more. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did people get that? I was oh. about to screenshot that and it's used to take it. I think one more. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not the kind of thing I like to spend time on in sessions. Let's see. Jesse, could you exit full screen? Would it show the whole anime, the whole thing? That would be very clever. Let's do that. Yay. All right. Take it down. Feel free. Then we'll break off into our rooms. Maybe less than five minutes. I mean, less than 10 minutes, Prayog. Just a little bit less. Eight, nine. Thanks. All right, sending you guys to the breakout rooms. Run forth, be free. everyone welcome back oh my god technology is awesome in the old days we'd all be in a huge room and i probably have to shout hey isaac like 10 times before everyone can be back in one place let's appreciate nice okay welcome back let's jump straight into sharing Especially looking at everyone who might have wanted to share before but hasn't had a chance to. Okay, Javier, Javier, let's go. Yeah, right. So we were all discussing and and there were certain things that weren't common with us. But then this one topic that really, really came up with us was uh, talking to a new member at a, a conference, right? Because all of us realized that that somehow has determined where we are right now, whether it was a very supportive LCP coming up to us and talking to us, or whether it was when no one talked to them at their first conference, right? So it was really, really interesting to see that. And we all realized that for all of us, we wanted to shape the people that we're leading in the best way. So we were talking about our own kind of, you know, we're very passionate about leading our EBTs, but we also have certain insecurities when it comes to that, right? Uh, we we were feeling we were feeling like uh, scared or what, from things like what is the first message you put on that group to, how are you going to be chatting with them on a one-to-one -one space? So it was a really interesting um, viewpoint to get to understand that irrespective of wherever we are in that timeline, we're all extremely nervous, excited, and it's just a good flow of emotions in that sense. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, definitely wouldn't want any of you to overthink it, but just to approach that with some intention and actually feel excited at the prospect of, I can be more deliberate. So I can start to put my mind into who I am and how do I show that to other people? It's it's the opportunity to do that for sure. Who's next? Yes, you can, Sarah. Go on. Uh, yes. So I think Jerry covered my first point. The second point would be the last point, which was talking to or uh, talking to an uh, entity partner. Uh, so that's my favorite point, uh, thing about Isaac, in which I can just text people to messages and then I can get on the call with someone from uh, and another part of the whole world. So that's the most amazing thing about Isaac in which if I want to know something about a country, uh, about a recent news article or something which I read, I can directly ask that to a person who's from that country to get a better point of view. And for me, an entity partner would not be just a person that I do exchanges with, but just any partner in Isaac at all that I can work with and learn from. So I think both of us, uh, me and you are from Japan, discussed that this would be the best thing about Isaac in which it lets us be world citizens and talk to people from around the world. Thank you so much. That that warms my heart to hear. As an old timer, exchange is very close to my heart and just the kind of connections we can build because of it across the entities, it's, it's priceless, honestly. So the fact that you're all looking forward to it, definitely amazing. And yeah, the fact you're looking forward to it, it does, it definitely says something about you and what you're looking to get out of Isaac as well. Anyone else would like to share? I also want to add that if people don't feel comfortable unmuting you can feel free just to share something in the chat um yeah if that works better for you so don't hold back if you would rather do that 
Gabriela from MOC, you raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. This is Isabella from MOC. Uh, so my uh, so my passion uh, works best when I uh, like when I was when I'm talking to uh, my university, presenting ASEC to my university, and also like uh, talking to the new members. Because um, as I was talking to my group, group member, like um, actually being an LCP is kind of a exhausting and lonely thing. Like you have to lead and support all the people, but you like seldom after you become MS LCP, you don't have like another leader to constantly care for you and do all the stuff. And there will there will be sometimes I was wondering like, why am I still in this organization? Why am I here for? But we will actually have to for presenting these things to another people and to an or to an external partner like university. I would like actually to go back to find my initial initial. Um, initial motivations and the things that drives me to um, st still staying here and things I see that is really valuable here. Yeah, so I think that's the time when I really like feel my passion again, really can drive my passion, you know, go back to burning. Yeah, during all these times. Thank you. That's awesome. I, I definitely get a lot of energy and especially when I was in ISEC communicating what we do to people around us. Um, it's a good way to connect with that passion for sure. Any last takers for sharing? And again, please, if you would like to share but not necessarily speak, definitely type something in the chat. Uh, but anyone wanted to unmute and share? I would like to go next. Uh, Deepika and then Ayush. Yes. Okay, so in our discussion room, we didn't have that many sharings, but we were basically talking about uh, our EBs specifically on a very deeper level. We were talking about what they meant to us, what having the first EBM meant to us. And we also talked about how it would actually shape our EB journey in coming years and how we also reflected on our own LCBP experience, like uh, what was our first EBM like and how do we remember that? And we talked about how we wanted to shape that uh, for our own EB members now. And in that, um, I was talking about my people orientation part and uh, and another person in the room, same room was talking about, uh, talking about how she likes to be very passionate she's a very passionate person so she would want to uh, she would want to pass on that energy to to her eb during the first evm so so we were basically discussing about that and i really liked how we were actually able to dive deeper into so many different perspectives regarding it as well and yeah thank you thank you so much prayo did you say there was someone else you wanted to share uh yes ayush yeah yeah thank you prayo so like most of my friends already spoke about all the points, but I would like to add something about national legislations meeting. So mm -hmm. at NPC in India, I attended my first legislation. I was very afraid. I, did. I have no idea how it goes. What are the rules? How the Lego fair goes? How the discussion, the proposal, the passing of every amendment that we do. It was really nice. And I think as an organization also, we think like it's very important to have laws or you know some things to go back to so legislations are also very very important to be honest and uh, it's always uh, on i'm all, always on the edge how can i contribute to those legislations those meetings how will i as an lcp contribute or add meaning to those meetings so it's also very important for me and i'm still trying to figure out and looking forward to our nls legislations so yeah Awesome. Thanks, Ayush. Thank yeah, so definitely why I wanted to share those examples is because it's something that all of you are going to be doing, regardless of your context, um, what it looks like in your individual LCs or inside of your entities. And even though you might all have those same job descriptions, all of you are going to bring something different to the table, whether it's inside your LC, inside your EB team, you, you are you, and there's no point in trying to emulate what someone else might be doing. Cause yeah, we might see others around us and they might have qualities 
that we don't necessarily. And it's like, yeah, that looks really great. I feel like an LCP should be like that. If I'm one of, you know, someone who's a bit quieter, I feel like an LCP should be loud, should be assertive and put themselves out there. If I feel like, you know, wow, this person can really inspire people when they speak, I should make myself like that. But let's remove the shoulds and just think about what we are. And ISEC is a beautiful place where it doesn't matter if you are that loud, assertive person shouting from the rooftops, or if you're this really quiet, more strategic kind of guiding your people from behind. ISEC is a place where you can be equally as valid in any kind of that leadership. So we're really doing not only ourselves a service by being that passionate about who we are and showing that through, but we're also doing ISEC a service because we're continuing to prove that leadership looks different for everyone and leadership looks best when we're bringing our best into it too. This next thing, oh boy. So I decided to Google the word motivation, which I've done a lot of times for ISEC sessions. And this is one of the many pictures that appears. You'll find people climbing mountains and, you know, all this stuff that is just supposedly meant to make us feel like, yes, this is powerful and this is what motivation is supposed to look like. But sometimes motivation literally looks like this without the filter, without the glamour. Sometimes motivation looks like taking yourself out for a run when you don't feel like moving and you just feel like lying on the ground or just, I don't know, watching Netflix. Sometimes motivation looks like no one is watching me and no one is there to know maybe how shitty I feel at the moment. But I'm going to remember this, that facts don't change just because feelings do. One of my members when I was LCP, she asked me at the end of a national conference. It wasn't even the end. It was maybe a month or two afterwards. She said, hey, so um, we were all really excited when we were finishing up this conference. Everyone had some chances to think about what they care about, really feel very motivated, excited. And two months later, people are just tired. People have uni to do. They have stuff going on in their lives. What's, what's changed? You know, why is, why is it conference? She was asking, is it just conference? Like, is conference the thing that we need to make us feel motivated and inspired again? Like, do we need to be holding a conference every other weekend just so that people can pick themselves up? And it was a great question because I totally got what she meant, that feeling of it's so easy to feel that traditional, typical sense of motivation in a conference setting. But it's not actually the conference that's doing that. It's the fact that a conference gives us a space to think, to reconnect, but that doesn't mean that we don't get to do that, or more importantly, that we shouldn't do that on the day-to-day -day basis, especially when things are hard. That right now, I might feel excited. I felt excited when I wrote my manifesto. I felt excited when I ran for LCP. I feel so excited that I'm selecting my team. Yes, we're having our first EVM. But now we're in the middle of this huge peak and I just feel like crap. But just because I feel bad, has that actually changed anything about why I'm here in the first place? And this is something which didn't come easy to me as an LCP. I really drove myself from a place of passion. I really believed in what I stood for when I ran for LCP. I stood for creating real impact. That's what I wanted to see. That ISEC was great. We were having so much fun. Everyone was so inspired. But I saw impact as being able to create more experiences for people. And I'm definitely the type of person, type of leader. I was the type of LCP who just got really deeply caught up into this, who felt the sense of responsibility so much that sometimes I disconnected way too much from the feelings of those facts of what I was doing. And I just almost tried to punish myself by saying, but wait, no, just because you're feeling like crap right now, that doesn't mean that your motivation changed, right? So why don't you just pick yourself up and keep going? But now looking back, it's also okay. Firstly, to know that the facts didn't change just because my feelings did but also that it is so important to make sure that it's not just conferences where I remember and I can connect the feelings and the facts once again. This is my EB team back when I was in LCP. We had this tradition where we would go sit on, it's the steps of our state parliament, and we would get some ice cream from this really good gelato shop nearby and just eat it all together from like, you know, this one little container that we've all got and just chill. 
And unfortunately, that didn't happen all that much because I was really caught up in we've got to do our jobs. We've got to get things going. I came from an EB team when I was a VP where we did the chilling part extremely well. We were such good friends. We really loved each other, felt super close that sometimes we let the actual work slide. And I felt so scared that I was going to let the same thing happen that I actually ended up letting the opposite happen where fearing that too much time spent connecting would actually mean not enough getting done. But what I know now is that connection is just as much a part of the job. And to make sure that it doesn't fall into one or the other, because you definitely don't want to be just in your own brain all the time, just trying to do core work. You also don't want to be sitting on the steps and eating ice cream all the time. Both of those don't work. Both of those don't make you into a successful LCP, but they do deserve their own spot in your routine. If there was something about the scenarios that were posed before, that idea of talking to a member, talking to the university, addressing your EB for the first time, whatever all those things were, what I want to invite you to do now is just have a think about what is one thing, just one, one thing, very simple thing I can do throughout my term. So not all the time, but also not never, because I was an LCP, who kind of never did these things. But what can I really put in there quite frequently to ensure that I can always connect back to those facts, that my feelings can align with the fact of my motivation and why I'm there to begin with. So you can have a think about that. I just wanna give a minute or so and we can jump straight back into a plenary sharing. So take your time, have some thoughts and then I'll open up the space again. All right, so let's get some sharings again. Can I go? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, when you were first explaining about what is the one routine you can do as an LCP, uh, I first thought, okay, I might need to think a lot on this part. I don't know, I, I don't know myself really that well, or I don't know what could actually fit into my routine because I don't know what the journey is going to look like. But when I started to think the answer really came as something really simple that I already do, that I just want to continue doing throughout my term. Uh, no matter what happens because I realize that I can fit it so well into my routine and I can balance everything else uh, everything else in my life just as I balance the cycle on the road so uh, so I think it was uh, yeah it, I, it really came the answer really came easy which is quite surprising to me but yeah that is what happened that's awesome. Simple is always best when when you're thinking about these things do not complicate them it doesn't have to be a ceremony some fancy elaborate stuff, just something you know already makes you feel good, feel connected and just continuing it for sure. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Maybe just one more person so we can be sure to wrap up on time and get you to check Joshua out what time is for. From Beard, India. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I think something that we've been doing, like when I was a VP and what we've been doing was having these monthly things where we just come together and we just talk. It could be the deepest of subjects. It could be things, the smallest of things that are going on in our lives. But I think that space really helped us to understand each other as people. And uh, like it had, I want to continue that because I feel like that, uh, in the very beginning, that will bring us uh, closer together. So I think that is something that I wanted. 
Awesome. Love the simplicity of that. And I can see someone here is loving your new hair as well. So that's always good to get that support. Thanks, everyone. So definitely keep that one thing in mind. As simple as you can make it, but you know it's going to give you that energy and refresh. So just a couple of things, and I'm going to leave this to you as something to think about for after the session. The first is, what are the facts about my motivation that won't change, even when my feelings do? This, you probably don't need to think too far or too wide, because when you were applying, when you stood before your LC, whether virtually or physically, these were things that you already have given some thought to. And this is a perfect time to kind of cement that, to acknowledge that my feelings are definitely going to fluctuate. To know right now that I'm not going to be feeling great for even a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean that the facts are necessarily going to change. And of course, what we were just discussing before is how can I regularly stay connected to those facts? So whether it's just connecting and being able to chat on a regular basis, um, if it was what was shared before about actually presenting ISEC to externals, to a university, know what you do that makes you feel alive when you do ISEC and make sure that you're doing that. And incredibly importantly, inside and outside of ISEC, who can support me to do it? I encourage you to go with both, right? Because it is so easy, especially for the friends we have outside of the organization to you know, kind of lose track of how deeply we get into what we do and those passions. So always making sure there's someone out there that can give you those perspectives, incredibly important. I just wanted to run through for you as a finishing off what the objectives of this session actually were. So it was about developing a clear compass of your journey and knowing where to go back when you lose your motivation. About knowing that you have a clear support system that can anchor you. And at the end of the day, it is a journey. The session itself, I hope that none of you came to it thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna to come to this because by the end, I'm definitely gonna know my passion. I definitely know how I'm gonna use it in my LCP journey because it just doesn't work that way. And the fact is you don't have to have it all figured out as long as you don't stop trying. And that trying doesn't mean you alone struggling to figure it out, but always making sure that you're taking that support from the people around you. You might be LCP by role, your role might be to support your team, your LC, those people, but you equally deserve that support back and making sure you can establish those connections to get that is going to be just as important in your journey. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been great spending this evening with you. It always makes me super excited to see all the new generations that are going to be leading ISEC. Um, so yeah, really all the best. You're coming into this role at a weird and wonderful time of the world, not just the organization. So what I really wish for all of you is to see the opportunity in everything, even when the limitations do exist and to really connect to the things that drive you and know how to keep that going on consistently. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Jesse, for the wonderful session. I loved it as a, even I was a tech person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks tech guy, Prayog. And only two minutes over time. I'm getting better at facilitating. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All, Enjoy all the, right. the conference. So for everyone, uh, we are immediately heading to the checkout. Uh, please go to the checkout link directly. We are waiting for you there. See you guys in checkout. That's the link. Go to your calendar link and see you in checkout. Thanks, everyone. Bye. You can join if you want. <laughs> checkout. I, I'm good. I think I need to get ready for bed, to be honest. <laughs> I have I have work in the morning. But good night, Jesse. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome. Thank All you. The best. Good night. Bye. Bye. Join the main plenary guys for checkout.